Welcome to The Robin Graham Show, the podcast for purpose-driven women who want to achieve sustainable success without having to be on social media. Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show, Success Without Social. We've had episodes in the past about Pinterest. And today we're going to talk about Pinterest again with a former guest, Kate All, who was on the show in episode 214, which I will link in the show notes for you. But we're going to take a different spin today. And we're actually going to do almost like a case study around Pinterest. And I had asked Kate a question. And as a Pinterest guru, Pinterest expert, Pinterest manager, all those things, Kate has a lot of insight that we, as just a lay user of Pinterest, may not have. So I'm excited to dive into this today, and I hope you will enjoy this conversation that is going to bring some new insights, new light on Pinterest for you, and whether or not you should be using it for your business. Kate All, welcome to The Robin Graham Show. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, you're always so sweet. And I always enjoy talking to you and consuming your content too. I know we're connected on LinkedIn and that's where I consume most of your content. Um, And I've learned so much from you over the years. So thank you for everything you put out into the world to help all of us grow our businesses and do the thing. Yeah, you're welcome. (laughs) Before we dive into what we were just talking about before we hit record, can you just explain to us what is Pinterest? Yeah. So we think of Pinterest like a Google with a lot of images. So it's search and discovery. It's not social. People go to the platform to really look for ideas. So I tend to put it in the bucket of YouTube, Google, and then Pinterest is there with people who are not interested in conversation, really. They're interested in curating their own life. So a common thing that we say is Pinterest is like a library. Instagram is like a bar. So we want the social aspect over on Instagram, the searching aspect over on Pinterest. Mm, Okay. Interesting. And do we need it for our businesses? Well, I would say this, if you thrive on a business that needs traffic coming to the website, whether it is to get leads, to get ad income, to get any type of revenue, then I believe it's one of those ones that you want to use to be a traffic driver. And so it depends on what niche you're in, what your goals are. If you're a local business that thrives on local community, I probably wouldn't suggest Pinterest for you because it's not only national, but it's global too as well. So it's not going to drive that traffic to your restaurant or your hair salon or something like that. So I would avoid it for those particular niches. Hmm. Okay. Fascinating. So something you said in your original statement was that it's for discovery. So people can curate their own lives. So with that being said, as a coach, we've been using Pinterest for several years and we've been posting faithfully. I think we're at like year four of posting faithfully where we put up maybe five to seven pins a day, five days a week, take the weekends off. We see a lot of traffic to the website, but we don't necessarily see conversion from Mm. Pinterest or on Pinterest. What are your thoughts on that? Okay. So explain to me what the ideal conversion is. So like they're coming to your website. What do you want them to do? Okay. So, and this is where this gets tricky, I think. And I think you being here will give some great insight. So most of our pins are directing people to blog posts with a call to action of download a free ebook or a free resource. Okay. Yes. Is that, yes. oh, go ahead. Uh, yes, that is happening. We are getting, our email list grows continually, right? Um, does it grow at a rapid rate? No, but it does trickle in where we see bigger email growth, email list growth is from other things like podcast interviews, um, summits, mm. those kind of things. So that could be one conversion. Two could be someone discovering us and booking a call right away from a Pinterest post or pin, right? Or a pit, or it could be that someone applies. So Mm. once people hit the website, we can use Google analytics to see where they're going, right? But I haven't seen 
significant conversion from those pins coming to the website. Okay. Got it. So I would say number one is podcaster summits are always going to be warmer. So it's going to grow faster. Whereas Pinterest is going to be colder, right? So the fact Mm -hmm. that you even got them to sign up is actually a huge win because they have no like previous interaction with you. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a much slower growth than something that's warmer. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be right there. I would say a lot of people struggle in general getting people to sign up for emails from Pinterest. So the fact that you are having it shows that you are having some success. And I would ask, has it grown over the years, over those four years, have you seen it kind of a steady uptick, not necessarily up and to the right, but kind of continually bringing this consistent conversion to email? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So then I would say right there, that's a huge win over other people who are driving traffic to their website and they miss that conversion piece. So what they're saying to us is I'm getting all this traffic, but I'm not converting them. And when I ask what I asked you, which is what's your conversion? They're like, well, I, I just want them to sign up for like my free recipe pop up or my free thing that pops up and I get on my email list. And they're not having people engage with it. I would say the fact that you are having it shows that it's working. It's just a matter of maybe we need to uptick more pins or maybe we need to change up getting different names of your boards. That's a whole nother thing, but I would say, great job. I think you're actually doing pretty good with the fact that you are converting Pinterest traffic, which is incredibly hard to do because it's cold. I think this is so important that it's not necessary. When we think of conversion, I think many people think buy, buying selling. And that's not necessarily the case because what you said is so key that Pinterest is a cold audience. Yes, we grow our follower count and those people follow us, they see our pins, but they're not in our inner circle unless they take that action and become part of our more intimate community, which is our email list. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I would say too, when your people ask the question, like, should I use Pinterest? If you look at your kind of wheel of how you're getting people to your website, <clears throat> excuse me, how many cold sources do you have and are they working? I think it's really easy to gravitate towards things that are warm because I'm, I love talking to my warm audience. It's really easy but it's really hard to talk to a cold audience. It's tough for a lot of people. So if you are looking to really leverage a cold audience, whether it's YouTube, Google, Pinterest, and you don't have one of those in your suite of that circle, then you need to add that in. And Pinterest is probably, I would argue, easier than YouTube and sometimes easier than Google. Mm. Okay, so that's interesting because when we look at Google, there's so much so much power behind Google in terms of the the search engine. And if we focus on search engine optimization, we can be ranked on Google, which is where most people make their buying decisions or click to buy. Um, We know they go to social media more for information. So I've always thought of Pinterest more of information-based gathering information where Google was more of, I'm going to click and buy. Mm. Yeah. And you are right on about that. I think people on Pinterest take a long time to make decisions. And so that's why when you do get somebody that is clicking on your image and making a decision to join your email list, that's pretty awesome because usually it takes quite a bit of time for people to get there, but it says that you've garnered interest. You've gotten them curious. Now they're ready to take the next step with you pretty immediately. So that's actually a huge success on your part because a lot of people experience this clicking on their website, bouncing away, clicking, and they're not getting that conversion because they're not connecting with them. They're not hitting their pain point where they go, oh, I need this. This makes sense. And it's answering my question. An email list is free. Of course, I'll give you my email. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So when you look at Pinterest from a product provider versus a service provider, like a coach or a VA or something like that. What do you think has more weight? Like how, like which industries have more weight on Mm. Pinterest? What are people searching for the most on Pinterest? 
Right. So I would say there's always the top five niches, which are food, home decor, or DIY, weddings, and fashion, right? So those are always going to be the big winners. Then we, and then it depends, like you could have a product seller in one of those top five niches. They're always going to do great, right? Because that's mm-hmm. what people are searching for. And mm-hmm. then you break it down into B2B versus B2C, totally different. And so what we tell people is that Sure. There's a lot of different people that are doing really, really good on Pinterest, but if your niche, like you and I are in the same, we're B2B, right? Mm -hmm. And so our numbers are going to look drastically different than a product seller because they're B2C. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at our numbers, we say, okay, what are my goals? And what are the things that are going to show me if this is working or not? And I think a lot of us have to make that decision about where we put our time and effort. And if we put our time and effort into Pinterest, what are we getting back from it? And it, is it what we want? Here's an example. We just did this recently with Instagram and we looked at Instagram and we said, we're spending probably upwards of 25 hours a month on this thing. And we are getting maybe, maybe 30 clicks a month, right? Engagement is going down. We're, we're jumping through hoops, videos, all those kinds of things. If I look at what I think a lead is over there, it's like 50 to $60 a lead. Mm-hmm. And then if I jump over to Pinterest and I do that same thing over there with my hours, it drops drastically to probably between five and $8 a lead. So if I look at that, I'm going to go, well, of course I'm going to give up the one that's taking all my time. And then I can focus over here on the one that doesn't take all my time. I don't have to show up in front of the camera. I can, if I want to, and then I don't have to, the algorithm doesn't beat you up. If you will, I feel like the Instagram algorithm is just like changes every five seconds. Mm -hmm. That's not the case with Pinterest. So that's a little bit of how we break it down. Mm -hmm. So, okay. With that said, um, one, you said time and energy, and I try to encourage all of my clients to be on Pinterest because I feel like it does drive traffic to the website. And we have such a heavy focus on the website copy and SEO. So if we have clarity and confidence around our message and we add the SEO to it, we're going to resonate more with our soulmate clients and be able to convert them more readily, right? So with that being said, Pinterest is what we use to drive traffic or one of the tools we use to drive traffic. But like I said, we post five to seven pins a day. Now that doesn't include the pins that are recycled that we repost after a period of time by using Tailwind. So what do you say to that? Because my my clients are often like, wait, I just seven times a day. Like, I can't do that. Like, that's so much content. Totally. Which yep. I can told I get 100 percent I don't do this myself. I have someone else do it. But the key is simplicity. So I want your opinion on the number of pins per day. But I also Hmm. want to emphasize that when you use a tool like Canva, you can create one graphic, have the same content, change the colors, change the fonts, mix it up a little bit, and it looks different. So you're not just Mm -hmm. posting the same thing because I, from what I understand, and I probably learned this from you previously, is that Pinterest wants everything to look different and unique. So, Mm. but at the same time, we can't reinvent the wheel to create that number of pins per day. Yeah. And I would never ask somebody to do that. That's, that's a lot. So if somebody was coming to me and they were new to use Pinterest, there's a few things I'd walk them through. One, your profile being fully set up to reflect your branding, right? It probably takes about an Mm -hmm. hour. Number two, to figure out what keywords are working on Pinterest, because your keywords that work on Google might not be your keywords that work on Pinterest. A really great, easy example is if you're a vegan, I know your listeners probably aren't food creators, but this is an example. Some people put in vegan, some people put in plant-based. That's a very different search. And so for you, what are the things that people are are searching? It could maybe be the same things on Google, but maybe not. So find your top 10 keywords that you're like, I'm going to use these for the next six months. And then I'm going to see how my pins get, you know, searched and how the algorithm picks them up. So that's there. You can even write a few descriptions if you want to make it easy for you. You don't have to change up your description every time. You can keep them the same, but you want to evaluate like, are these keywords actually going to work for me? And then three, which I would argue probably is the hardest part of Pinterest and the most labor intensive is the image. And people usually put 
it last. And they're like, okay, well, I'm going to slap this up on Canva, put some colors on it and call it good. But your image is the thing that people see. It's the first thing that people see. And so a lot of people need to be intentional about taking those keywords and putting them on the image, but also thinking what's going to get someone to click. Really, if you think about it and you think about your user, what is going to get them intrigued? What is going to get them interested and really invest your time in that. And you can create a few different images. They don't have to be totally different, but I want you to be thinking about different ways that you can attract your ideal user instead of kind of working for the algorithm, work for your user. And so now let's say you have a piece of content, blog post, whatever, you ha now have maybe two to three images for it. You can pin one today, pin one tomorrow. I don't expect anyone to do five to seven right away, Get into the groove of creating, creating images and pinning, and then putting it out there. It's going to take a little bit of time, especially if you're new to build up the bank. You know, for you, you have four years worth of content. So there's so much you can put on Pinterest. And a great thing for people who are seasoned like you is we went back and we have just recently started updating our Pinterest images. We haven't had a refresh of our Pinterest images in a long time. We changed up adding a few more colors. We kind of messed with the font a little bit. Even though it's not directly my font on my site, it still very much looks like our branding. And those actually are now getting pretty good engagement. So for someone like you, if you haven't changed up your images in a while, change it up, like get a little creative with it, try different words. And that is what's helping to kind of keep it fresh, but it doesn't have to be a big change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So where all should key phrases be used? So the image on the graphic or yep. image yep. in the title and in the description. Yep. Yes. So we do board name, board description, pin title, pin description. Okay. Perfect. And so how many times a day for someone who's sitting there thinking like, this just seems so overwhelming. It's not worth the time and energy to me. How mm. many times a day do you say, or how many pins per day or per week should people post in order right. to get if, traction? Mm, okay. So here's what I would say. Pinterest is going to take six to nine months for you to get any kind of traction. Mm -hmm. And an example I would share is we just invested in YouTube. We have invested for two years and it's been hard, but I knew why we were doing it and what our end goal was. I take the same approach with Pinterest. I know why I'm doing it and what the end goal is. I want diversification. I want Google, Pinterest, and YouTube all working on my behalf. I'm not going to, and sometimes it requires that I devote more energy, like with the YouTube thing than I did to Google because one's already established. So for Pinterest, it's saying... Uh, this is why I'm using it. And this is what I'm going to do for the next six to nine months, maybe even a year. But once you do get that going, Pinterest is going to be one of those things that now brings all that traffic to your website. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I like that you emphasize the, the amount of time that it takes six to nine months to build up. However, when you put content on Pinterest, it lasts a lot longer it lasts months compared to hours on other social platforms. A hundred percent. And I still have a post from 2017 that still brings me a lot of traffic. It's how to clean up Pinterest boards. It still gets searches. It still gets engagement. And I love that it's that long tail marketing. Like it's still working for me. And mm -hmm. that's where I want to put my effort. Like the example I shared earlier about Instagram, I went to my team and I said, why are we killing ourselves for this? Because sure. I love that. I can connect with my audience. I love that we can DM and I can still use that platform for that purpose, but it's not like something is it's gone in like a day, right? Mm -hmm. So all this effort we've worked at is now gone. Now, the great part is, is we can take some of those reels and you can repurpose them for Pinterest as videos. So we have done that. So that's, it's not a wasted effort, but I'm not interested in, especially in this current business environment, which feels really, really hard. I don't want to push a boulder uphill when my business overall feels like pushing a boulder uphill. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let go of the things that aren't working for me. And I'm going to invest in the things that I know are going to give me long-term benefits.
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I could not agree more. And the listeners know that I'm all about like taking a step back from social media and doing the things that are more sustainable. And I think Pinterest is one of those. What happens if you take time off of Pinterest? Oh, Say you've question. been working on Pinterest. What if you take some time off? Yeah. I had a friend who took actually two to three years off and she was still getting traffic from Pinterest. And in fact, in 2022, a lot of creators were really frustrated with where Pinterest was at because they had these idea pins, they had no links. And so they said, I'm out of here. And they went all in on Google. Well, guess what's happening now with Google's helpful content update. They're all now coming back to Pinterest, but they kept a lot of that traffic. It was still there. People are still pinning their content. It's still showing up in search. So you'll still see it. It's not like it's dead in the water. I mean, if you stopped using it for probably five years, I would say you might have a, have a little tough time coming back, but if you take a break for, I don't know, six months to a year, don't worry about it. It'll still be there. Oh, I love that. That's like, that's huge. Okay. So two more questions. One is how do we organize our boards? How many boards mm. should we have? And we've talked about the number of pins, but how many boards should we have? You can have as many or as little as you need. There really is no magic number, but we tell people ensure that the boards that you have you can put your content on them and they go to your website. So for you, if you had like a fashion board or a nails board, I'd probably tell you that it doesn't seem like your content can go there. So move it to secret. So that's yeah. really what we're thinking up with boards is relevancy. Mm -hmm. I love that. And then let's talk about ads very quickly, because when we, you were here for episode 214, I don't think ads were there yet. I think they came shortly after. So let's talk about ads and what, what would they mean to our business? What do, like, should we invest in them? Should we not? What's the difference between them versus social media ads? Mm. Yeah. So Pinterest ads look different than something like a Facebook ad. Pinterest loves that they are native in the platform. They kind of blend in. A lot of people don't even know that they're clicking on an ad. One great thing about an ad on Pinterest is you can really get them at the top of the funnel and even the bottom of the funnel. The middle is a little bit tougher, but if you're looking to build awareness, you want to get in front of new audiences. They're really great. There's like 14 different types of ads. There's lots of things that you can do. The frustrating part about Pinterest ads is they take two weeks to optimize. So we like to tell people is that if you're going to run ads on Pinterest, what you're doing is you're gathering data about who your audience is on the platform. And if that's important to you and you're investing in ads on other platforms, it's important that you learn who your Pinterest audience is. And you might target them with an email signup or you might target them with a particular product. There's a lot of great things. We mess around with ads all the time. I think they can be great. I think that some people find them frustrating to set up, especially if they've come from Facebook, but a lot of our team would say they're way easier than Facebook, but I think it's all about which one you started with first, but I love them. I think they're a great complement to what you're doing organically. And what is the cost of Pinterest ads compared to like Google ads or a social media ad? Yeah, I don't know so much about Google ads and what people spend, but we tell people anywhere between 10 and $50 a day. I have actually run, there's two things like on your pin, you'll see promote. That's called a promoted pin. When you go into the dashboard, you build an ad. I've done things where I've done a promoted pin for, I think a dollar a day or something like that. And that helped me get over the fear of ads. So I took one that I know I knew went to an email, like it went to a, a blog post with an email sign up. And I thought, okay, I'm going to promote this. I'm going to follow the steps. I'm just going to run it for 30 days. I think maybe I spent $30 and I think we got like 10 or 11 conversions. It wasn't like huge, but I say all that because I'm a person who's nervous about ads. I'm nervous about spending money and not getting return. Mm -hmm. And so I had to spend that $30 just to get over it. So mm -hmm. it was kind of fun. Well, plus 11, 11, you said 11 conversions. That may not sound like a lot of conversions, but I am 100% sure that even if one of those 11 actually bought from you, you would have at least 10 times your income or your investment of totally. the $30. So yep. it, it's almost a no brainer when you're looking at testing the waters. 
Yep. A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Are there any last, like, did I miss anything? Like we kind of went a different direction than we usually do because I wanted to emphasize, um, you know, my experience and, you know, yeah. kind of do that mini, very mini case study of, of using Pinterest. Um, I think it's important to emphasize the time that it takes mm. it. I think it's important to emphasize the dedication and patience. It's not just, you slap a couple pins up every week and then you're done. It does take some consistency and some time and energy, but it's not something to be afraid of. Mm -hmm. And I would say what you started with is a very common thing that we hear from people. And we actually have a podcast coming out in a couple of weeks about this. And it's this idea of, am I having success on Pinterest? Is this working? I'm doing all these things I've invested for all these years. Am I getting what I'm supposed to be getting? And I think what a lot of people are asking is, am I doing as good as the rest of the people? And are my numbers good? And I think one of the things we've learned from all the clients that we've worked with is every account has its own culture, has its own niche, has its own numbers, has its own goals. Right. And so when you told me what was working for you, I was like, that's great. Right. Like a lot of people would look at you and be like, you are getting email conversions from Pinterest. I can't even get them to like stay on my site for more than 20 seconds. And so I would say to a lot of people is get tunnel vision really fast on your own account, on your own metrics. And every year touch base with it and say, is this still serving me? Is this still giving me what I want? Not keeping everybody else out of those numbers, right? But is this what's working for my business? And then look at all the other platforms that you are using and say, is this one still doing what I want it to do? And if it's not, take a break from it. But if it is, keep doing it. So that's what I would tell people. Mm, I love that. So back to those numbers that you just mentioned. So Pinterest has different analytics than most social platforms. And you're looking at views, like 40,000 views. What exactly does that mean? And what mm. should people be looking at in terms of the analytics? Because they are so different right. than any other platform. They are, which is really frustrating sometimes, but actually there's so much more information. So there's a monthly view number on your account. I have a love hate relationship with that number. It is essentially every single data point that you have kind of thrown into that number it goes up and down. It's on a 30 day sliding scale. So I kind of glance at it, but then I go into my analytics on Pinterest and I'm looking for a couple of things. I want to look for where my impressions are. I want to look for outbound clicks and I want to look for saves. Saves and outbound clicks are kind of the two indicators that show really good intent and Pinterest prioritizes saves. So the more saves you can get that says, Hey, this was awesome. I might not be able to click on it now, but I'm going to click on it later. And that tells the algorithm like, Oh, this is really good content. So I want to see those once a month and just see, okay, how do I continue to get better at impressions? And a lot of this is all going to be based on your image. It's some of it is keywords for sure, because those are going to be found in search, but the image is the first thing that people see. Are they clicking? Are they seeing it? Right? Like that's impressions. So mm -hmm. those are the numbers that I would look at and play around in analytics. Like you can go 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. You can see your boards that are most active. I think we looked at our boards and we found that some of the names of our boards were actually like really old. We typed them into the keywords, like they weren't even there. So we actually searched and said, we're going to rename our boards because they're not doing anything for us. So that's what you can do too. When you look in analytics is make minor changes. Mm -hmm. I love that. And it is fun to get in there. It's almost like a rabbit hole. <laughs> so allow yourself yeah. some time because there's so much to see, but it's fun to actually see. And, and you can yeah. very quickly make a change without a lot of, you know, you're not redoing something in its entirety that feels so overwhelming, yes. like to change the name of a board or something like that is actually very simple. It is. And I think too, like 
when we think about our website, we think about our podcast or our content, we're always having to update it. Think about if we kept it the same as when we started, like my podcast was terrible when I started. I don't want the same. I want new artwork. I want new fresh. Like that's the same with Pinterest. Like you've got to keep it fresh and that's a really good thing to pursue, but it doesn't have to be labor intensive. It can Mm -hmm. be once a year. It can be once every six months. I love Pinterest because it doesn't take up as much time. I think people definitely get confused by it. So I don't want to diminish that. But once you're kind of over that confusion, it really works. Yeah. Okay. This has been awesome, Kate. I think you've eased our minds about Pinterest, given us a little bit of hope about Pinterest. So tell the listeners where they can find you and connect with you, maybe even hire you to do their Pinterest. Yeah, I would say we're in podcasts. So hop over to Simple Pin Podcast, subscribe, and just get to know who I am and the teaching. And then we're at simplepinmedia.com. We have something for everybody from you can hire us to you can take our products and you can put them into action with just a simple course or even Canva templates. I would say that would be a quick win right now. Change up your, your image, just get something fresh and start new. Yeah, that was simplepinmedia.com. And I will have that link in the show show notes as well. Kate, thank you so much for being here. This was absolutely fabulous. And that's a wrap, friends. A heartfelt thank you for being here. I know there are many other ways that you could spend your time. So I truly appreciate you joining me. And be sure and visit the website, therobingraham.com forward slash resources for a plethora of resources to help you grow your business for long-term success.